In this episode, we fab up a new high flow exhaust and then take the fig out for a test drive to see how it performs. Let's go. In our last episode, I got bit by the old mod bug and made a couple DIY upgrades to our unsuspecting Figaro. Come on, you guys would have done the same thing. 75 horsepower just wasn't cutting it. There's got to be some more magical turbocharged horses hiding somewhere under the valve cover, and I'm going to find them. So far we've added a boost gauge, cooled down our super hot turbo boost with an alcohol injection system, and freed up the restrictive air intake. Now it's time to let her breathe with a high flowing exhaust system. Let's get to work. So after our thorough vehicle inspection a couple episodes ago, I found the fig to be in great overall condition for its age. The biggest issues I found were the low, rough idle that we fixed with a bunch of new vacuum lines and a tune-up, some weird front-end noises that we fixed with a new lower control arm and ball joint, and a partly rusted out muffler hanger that we addressed by whipping up a replacement. So after racking up some miles going to my local cars and coffee and driving around with the kids, an annoying exhaust leak made itself known. After a little investigation, the culprit was a rusted flange joint, which makes a terrible sound. You know the one. Here, I'll make the noise for you. So one weekend, when I had some time to spare, I brought the fig into the garage, got it up in the air, and had every intention of fixing that one little but very annoying exhaust leak. But after spending some time eyeballing that rusted out flange and taking a closer look at the condition of the rest of the exhaust system, in my mind, it just didn't make sense to spend time patching this rusted exhaust back together. Like most front wheel drive four cylinder cars, it was a pretty simple design, so I decided to make an all new turbo back exhaust system instead. This is where the mod bug bites once again. So if you're gonna make an all new exhaust, it'd be silly not to make a few improvements to the original design, right? Turbo cars love a free flowing exhaust, so some larger diameter piping, smooth mandrel bends, and a high flowing muffler should free up some power. So off we go. All of the stock exhaust parts have to come off, so I sprayed everything down with penetrating oil before breaking out the tools. In order to remove the stock cast iron turbo outlet, the downpipe bolts are first to come out. After that, a couple braces are removed, and out comes the Figaro's boat anchor. Now we've got a good look at the room we'll have to work with when fabbing up the new turbo outlet and downpipe. Now the rest of the exhaust system can come out. Okay, our first job is to build that new turbo outlet and downpipe combo. So here's a look at the stock one that we pulled out. It weighs a ton and is quite huge since it includes a catalytic converter in there. You can already see some restrictions and choke down areas here and there that we can improve upon. You can't exactly pop online and buy an exhaust flange for the Figaro's stock Hitachi turbine housing, so I took the factory steel gasket to a local metal shop and asked them to cut a steel flange for me. They obliged and it turned out great. Next, I visited summitracing.com and ordered one of their universal rod builder exhaust kits in the two and a quarter inch size. I used the same kit in the two and a half inch size on my V8 Miata build and was impressed with the quality and value that this kit offers. It includes four four foot long straight sections, four 180 degree mandrel bends, 
four 90-degree mandrel bends, and four 45-degree mandrel bends. This kit has more exhaust bits than we'll need, but was a much better bargain than buying only the parts I needed individually, so I'll have some leftovers for a future project. With the flange made and our exhaust piping ready to go, we can now start figuring out the rest of the turbo outlet assembly by doing a little CAD work. Oh no, not that kind of CAD work. This is what I'm talking about. After a fair amount of head scratching and a bunch of cuts with the saw, I feel pretty good about the fit of this initial bend. Time to weld it up for good. After a little touch up with the Dremel, the first part of the turbo outlet is complete. Let's fab up the rest of the downpipe. To connect the downpipe to the rest of the exhaust system, I'm using these V-band clamps that I also got from Summit Racing. I've used these on a variety of exhaust builds over the years and love the reliable leak-free seal. They also make future servicing simple since they can be disconnected and reconnected easily. Just weld the flanges on and you're good to go. So here's a look at the finished turbo outlet and downpipe combo compared to the stock unit. You can see that we've simplified the design while making a nice, big, straight, restriction-free path for the spent turbo gases to travel down. The new downpipe also has much more interior volume. The old one was one and three quarter inch across at the opening and neck down even further in spots, while the new one is a full two and a half inch until the outlet, which I reduced to two and a quarter to match the rest of our new exhaust system. Okay, let's bolt it up so we can keep working our way back. With the fig up in the air, it was a good time to do a little measuring and eyeballing to chart the path for the rest of the exhaust. First up is the front section that connects to the downpipe we just installed. With that first bend in place, I jumped a bit downstream to mock up the position of the resonator that I'm running. I always like to use a resonator to get rid of drone and other unpleasant exhaust tones. To handle this job, I chose a Dynomax Race Bullet muffler. I've used them as resonators many times in the past and have always been really happy with them. I also picked up this flex section. Our stock Figaro exhaust didn't have a flex section, but most every modern car uses them and they are essential for minimizing vibration and reducing stress on the exhaust system. Now it's time to mock it all up and tack it in place. So 
keep everything in place, I'll tie into this stock hanger. Up front, I need to make a metal tab to tie into the stock rubber isolator mount. With all of that tacked together, it's time to drop it down and weld it together for good. You know, I just love welding outside. Breathing the fresh air, listening to nature. Wait, what the? Ugh, gross, shut up! Gosh, why are you doing this? Settle your differences elsewhere, please! I can't hear myself think! Dang it, man! Go away! So here's the front half of our exhaust, welded and ready to go. This is a huge upgrade compared to our stock exhaust. The two and a quarter inch piping is much larger than our stock one and three quarter inch, which was crimped down smaller in many spots. Look at the difference between the old and new downpipe flange. Nice. So with the front section complete, I removed the turbo outlet and painted it with the same VHT flame proof paint that we used on our turbo heat shield. To keep underhood temps under control, I'm using this DEI titanium exhaust wrap that I also got at Summit Racing. Wrapping an exhaust isn't too difficult, it just takes some planning and patience. There are a couple ways to keep the wrap in place. I like to use good old fashioned stainless steel heavy duty hose clamps. So here's our completed downpipe. Not too bad. Let's bolt it up for good. Oh, check this out. With the factory heat shield in place, it's pretty stealthy. Before bolting up the front section, I gave it a coat of Duplicolor Low Gloss Black High Heat Engine Enamel. Ah oh man, it's a great day out here. Hold up, what is that noise? Ah oh, no, again with the birds! Ugh, dang it man! Could you give it a rest? I know painting an exhaust may seem strange, but I do it for two reasons. First, I like to protect everything, and second, the black satin paint makes the bright silver piping disappear from view under the car. No, it doesn't flake or burn off, other paints might, but I've been using this stuff for a long time with excellent results. Here's the front half of our new custom exhaust. And back on it goes. With that done, it's time to get cracking on that rear section. Okay, with the first couple bends tacked together, let's take a look at the muffler we're going to use in the rear. This is the tried and true Thrush Turbo Muffler. It's compact, flows well, and does a good job at controlling sound. Sound control is really important as I want to free up some power, but don't want to deal with constant noise and drone. Now that we have a muffler, it's time to make a hanger for it. For this, I used a little more cardboard and came up with a simple muffler strap. 
Once the strap is cinched around the muffler, I'll weld a couple universal rubber hangers to it. Whenever I'm working on the rear section of an exhaust, I like to mock everything up with the full weight on the suspension. This gives you a more accurate idea of how much room you have to work with, especially when you have to go up and over a rear axle. Alright, so here's the completed rear section all tacked up with the V-band in place. Time to take it off the car and finish weld everything together for good. Not again! Get out of here! Go mate in some other tree! Gosh dang it! Birds! Why does this keep happening? Is this some sort of omen? Finally, here's the completed downpipe back exhaust. Before I bolt it up, I'm going to use a couple of these heavy duty polyurethane exhaust mounts from Torque Solutions. They replace these old worn out squishy mounts that can cause exhaust rattle and other problems. Now we can bolt up the exhaust. Okay, there's one final job to do, and that's to install a good looking exhaust tip that matches the look of the stock exhaust Figaro perfectly. And this one ain't it. This is just a temporary solution so I can drive around and enjoy the fig before the nasty winter weather rolls in. What I plan to do this spring is adapt the stock muffler tips to the outlet of our new muffler for a 100% factory look at the rear. More on that when the time comes. Okay, let's enjoy our work and take the fig for a drive. Okay folks, here we are in my 1991 Nissan Figaro. I thought I'd take you along for a little drive just to give you some of my thoughts on the car and my impressions so far, especially since we've made a couple of little modifications to it, but mainly what it's like to own and drive. Driving this car is fun. Not 500 horsepower Miata fun, but fun in a different way. Fun in that you're driving in something very unique and different and a car that has tons of character and has that retro feel to it. Um, you know, when you're behind the wheel, it feels like you're behind the wheel of a car from the 50s or early 60s. Uh, the only thing that sort of gives it away is that turbo spooling up under there and then the modern creature comforts that you have. I think what's most fun is the character of the car. It really embodies that early 90s Japanese creativity and design and engineering and uh, all in one car. And that's, that's what I think is the most fun. So in addition to the fun of being behind the wheel and driving it and owning a car like this, um, another fun thing is just people's reactions. People seem to really love this car. Everywhere you go, you get thumbs up and waves and things. And you know, if you stop and get gas, everyone's gonna wanna ask you what it is, uh, how did you get it, where did you get it? Most people, uh, nine out of 10 people think it's um, an Italian car from the 60s or late 50s. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever guessed that it's a 1991 and 
then a Nissan on top of that. So when I got this car, it had a really rough low idle and you know we diagnosed that immediately as some vacuum leaks uh, it needed a tune-up and some basic maintenance things like that and once we did all that um, made a huge difference in how this thing drove it was very smooth and uh, just felt like a different car felt like it should and I also did the valve adjustment when I had the valve cover off I know I didn't show that in the video but um, it's just because I was rushing but uh, I did do the valve adjustment and that really quieted down the engine at idle when it was hot so if you're wondering why I decided to do some modifications to this car it was strictly to give it a little more punch off the line and in the mid-range um, driving this thing you know with a three-speed automatic and a one liter four-cylinder turbo I mean you can imagine it's a little sluggish off the line and I just wanted to give it a tiny bit more oomph So out of the modifications that I did to this car, the exhaust definitely made the biggest difference as far as that off the line and mid-range punch. It uh, really scoots off the line now uh, from part throttle and that's what I was looking for. It was pretty sluggish before. So overall I'm happy with the couple modifications we made. Um, I think to make it any faster you would have to add you know at least I don't know five or six or more pounds of boost and fuel and fuel control fuel injectors things like that so I don't think I'm willing to go down that path so I've noticed in the comments some people mentioning that I'm decreasing the value of this car by modifying it and I just want to point out that all the modifications I'm doing are easily reversed back to stock and that was intentional you know I just wanted to sort of do a couple small modifications and experiment to see if I could get a little more punch off the line and in the mid-range my goal wasn't to make a ton of power or make this thing a, a, like a sleeper drag racer or something. Definitely not the goal. I just wanted to make it a little more punchy off the line. My wife drives this thing and I just wanted to give it a little more oomph. I mean, honestly, when you're just taking off from a, from a dead stop at part throttle, it was pretty darn sluggish. And we'll totally address that now. It's real punchy off the line. I'm happy with it. So the best parts of owning this car are just the experience of the whole thing, of how unique it is and different, and just the feel. The car just really has a lot of character and soul, and I think when you get behind the wheel and, you, and you, when you grab onto this steering wheel and look at all these interesting gauges and features of the interior, and just looking out over the hood with the curves, uh, you know, the way the hood is designed, just the whole thing, and, the, and especially when you have the top down, I mean, that has, adds a whole nother dimension to this car of fun, when you can drop that top, and, and it's a fixed roof convertible, which means, you know, you have the fixed pillars, and your, you know, wind's not blowing you around like a typical convertible, so it's actually, you can have the top down, and you're not, that wind isn't buffeting around, and you can still have a conversation, listen to the radio, whatever. So some of the bad things about this car, one, the biggest one is constantly walking to the wrong side of the car to get in. You know, having left-hand drive cars in, in the U.S. my whole life, I just go to the, the left side of the car by nature. So, you know, what you have to do is sort of play it off and act like you meant to go to that side of the car for some reason. Like, oh, I meant to just go in there and get in the glove box for something. So it's really embarrassing. I've done it like a thousand times. I don't think I'll ever change. I'll just keep doing it forever. Another one is the turn signal is on the opposite side. So you're pretty much constantly hitting the wipers uh, when you want to turn. So that happens a lot. But I am training myself. And I'd say about 90% of the times I'm getting it right. The other 10%, here go the wipers on high when I want to turn. This car has an awesome stereo, which you've seen. This uh, Clarion stereo that was made for the Figaro. Very stylish, matches the interior. But um, as you know, the the radio frequencies are different in Japan, so you don't actually pick up any radio stations here. So you don't get to listen to any radio. But there is a cool CD that was in this car when I got it. And uh, I listen to that pretty much all the time. I just leave that in there. drive through restaurants are sort of off the table. You know, you have to reach across. Although this car is small enough to where I have gone through some drive throughs and you can just sort of scoot over and reach through the passenger window and you're fine. And not that this is a bad thing, it's just what the car is, but it is not fast. 
I like fast cars like you guys do. I like to be able to pass easily and shoot up hills and stuff. But this car, you know, you have to sort of plan ahead a little bit. And let me tell you, when you're going down the highway, you know, this has a three-speed automatic, and you're going down the interstate with all these 18-wheelers and stuff, and, I mean, this thing is just screaming going down the highway and drive, uh, you know, at 70, 75, 80 miles an hour. It's just, <laughs> you're just white-knuckling it the whole time down the interstate. It's pretty wild. In the interest of science and furthering the turbocharged community, let's hook the FIG up to the V-Box Sport and see how it performs in a quick 0-70 to 70 mile per hour test. If you haven't heard of the V-Box, it's the same tool that car magazines, race teams, and car manufacturers use to measure vehicle performance. Prior to our mods, the FIG ran a pokey 0-60 to 60 mile per hour time of 10.2 seconds and a 30-70 to 70 mile per hour time of 10.4 seconds. Sheesh. Let's see how it does after our mods. Hey, not bad. We've lopped a second and a half off the 0 to 60 mile per hour time and over two seconds off of our 30 to 70 mile per hour time. Nice! It's still not going to win any races, but on stock boost, I'm really happy with these results. Most importantly, it feels much more lively from behind the wheel. So, we know how the Figgy performs. But I know what you're thinking. Will it do a burnout? Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, that was awkward. <laughs> the answer is no. It won't do a burnout. Uh, maybe I didn't try hard enough. I don't know. So here are a few of my final thoughts after racking up some more miles. I really lucked out on the exhaust note. As you'd expect, there is no knowledge online about aftermarket exhaust for this car and how they'll sound, but thankfully, it's just as quiet as stock while cruising, while letting just a tiny bit of snarl out under boost. The resonator is doing its job too, as there is no drone at all. The car drives great, the turbo spools noticeably faster than before, and is very responsive even with our old-fashioned 3-speed automatic. You also get just a little of that sweet turbo soundtrack that was missing before. Regarding the alcohol injection, I don't currently have a way to test its before and after results, but I'm sure it's helping to reduce heat soak and improve overall performance. Okay, so another little cool side effect of alcohol injection, when you have the top down and the windows down, you've been in the boost a little bit, you get out of it, you get this alcohol aroma that comes out of the tailpipe and wafts into the car. It's pretty wild. Thank you for watching this series. I really appreciate your comments and support and sharing the video with your friends. Um, it's been a lot of fun cleaning up this car and bringing it back. Of course, it's huge fun to own and drive around. I drive around a lot with my kids and wife. We always have a great time in it. Um, and I, I don't plan on doing a whole lot more to this car. Uh, maybe just small little fix-ups and improvements and things, but I love it the way it is and uh, I'm real happy with how it's performing. Uh, I think trying to make it any faster or crazier would sort of ruin the character of the car. So I'm gonna keep it where it is and just enjoy it, but I'll give you updates from time to time on how it's doing. Thank you for watching and thank you to the Nissan Figaro Owners Club for their help and excellent resources online. Be sure to check out my Facebook page for updates and other fun stuff too. So with that said, thanks again folks, we'll see you next time.